Dearly beloved, we praise the Lord. He is our life and welcome again to this one of the episodes in Finding God and we continue with the Word of God. I ever get excited when we get to the Word of God because there are lessons from every line, from every chapter, from every verse that is written in the Word of God. It's an encouragement that we derive from here for our spiritual, you know, um, edification and even physically that we shall move as a people created in God's own image. So in this Finding God episodes, we thank God that actually we have them and we continue, you know, in, on a journey. It's a journey of life. It's a journey that leads us somewhere. And we thank God that his word is ever with us. And so we shall continue with our episodes. And this one is still on the journey of the people of God coming all the way from Egypt, going to the promised land. And from this, we learn that we are also on a journey. On a journey. Life is a journey. You begin somewhere and you end somewhere. And so we thank God that when we read about people here in the word of God who did great things. And for the journey of the people of Israel from Egypt to the promised land Canaan, there are so many people that we read about. And since we're on a journey, we shall pick, continue picking here and there for our edification. And so let us pray and thank God for the word. Thank you, God, for this word that we're going to learn, that we're going to share about today. Pray that you bless us so that we pick lessons that in our own right, we also get blessed like these people are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, the person that we talk about now, of course, I want to bring the name called Bezalel. Bezalel. But think about the giftings that God gives us, that you get gifted to do something for the glory of God. And this is very important, getting gifted, talented for the glory of God. And there's something that actually God wants you to do as you live this life, as you move about. What are you able to do well? What are you able to do best? And so that from what you do, your gifting, your talent, your natural ability that God has given you, you bring glory to God. Of course, actually, our times, we have very many people who do very many things, that are, that are in sports, playing football, those that are in, you know, name them, very many, carpentry, name them. God can be praised. God can be glorified in our work. Whatever talent, whatever gifting that God has given you. So this man, Bezalel, gives us a huge lesson. That actually is something that we want to talk about. And we shall, be we shall be glorifying God's name in our work that we do daily. And this we find in Exodus chapter 31. Our basis in finding God, nowhere else but the word of God. And so in Exodus chapter 31, I just want to read a few verses that will inform our engagement this moment. And in chapter 31, the Bible says, that the Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Ur, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. Now in verse 2, when you hear Hur, is one of the figures that I've already talked about. Hur, H-U-R, that man that supported Moses' hand. And here, his grandson called Bezalel. Is that what we're talking about here? And verse 3, the Bible says, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, 
in the cutting of stones for setting and in carving wood to work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed with him Oholiab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan. And I have given to all able men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the master seat that is on it and all the furnishings of the tent. And you'll continue reading on and on and on and on. And I praise God for these men. This time, the man Bezalel, and he had an assistant called Oholiab. They inform this, our interaction with the word of God. And I will always treasure these people. Because when we read Bible pages, you will find names of men and women that actually guide us through our life. And I'll keep emphasizing it. On these Bible pages, there are people, there are names, there are women, there are we children. That name them. They inform our being. And our time is informed by this. And so Bezalel is praised, is called, is commissioned because of his creativity, his gifting, his talent. And he exhibited it. He showed that he was able. And so, because he was highly skilled, God calls him by name. Now, I just desire, you know, when God calls you by name, many things change for the good, for the better, actually, actually for the best. Bezalel mentioned here, because God called him, commissioned him, and the purpose is known. So he was identified. And God himself is the one who did it. And God is the one who commissioned him to play an important role in the lives of the Israelites. They were on the journey going to the promised land and God was preparing them step by step. And in our life, there is a way God has prepared us. There is a way God prepares his people, you know, to do his work. And he was preparing him, he was preparing them as they moved into the promised land, worship was meant to continue. Places of worship were supposed to be with in the, in the midst, the tent of meeting, the Ark of the Covenant, which contained the Ten Commandments that Moses had received. And, and so all these things were called furnishings, making the place of worship beautiful. And this is something that I, I collect from here because he talks about being artistic, being skilled to do God's work. And this his assistant, Oholiab, also commissioned to do the work. So God calls and gives needed skills, needed skills to do his work. In our churches today, we have people that are gifted differently. And I applaud everyone that contributes to God's work, depending on your gifting. I admire the young men and women on the pianos, on guitars, and you see them, actually, when that you see them doing great work there, gifted. You find someone is playing a guitar, but singing. You find someone is playing an organ, but singing. You find someone is doing, setting very many things, in the house of the Lord. So it could be in the house of worship, but also gifted, could, could be gifted elsewhere. You could be one gifted maybe with carpentry, you know, you could be gifted in, you know, computer accessories, whatever they are, many of those things. God calls you to do his work for his glory. And so when we talk about Bezalel, we are talking about different giftings, even footballers. People enjoy football, and when you see someone dribbling, and you know, it is a gifting. And so it is high time that everyone of us recognized how God gifts us and how these giftings can give glory to his name. And I thank God that I'm reading about, I've read about this man, um, Bezalel, because actually he was 
filled with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence. In verse 3 of chapter 31 of Exodus, and with knowledge and with craftsmanship to devise artistic designs. I admire people that just sit in a moment that produce something. You need a house, you need a, something to, and they have intelligence. And so God talks about them in his word here. And so are you endowed with anything? It's not your own making, pray the Lord. God desires actually everything that you do. You know, we have designers. You find someone getting a pair of scissors and he begins cutting a piece of cloth and in no time they have produced a dress. And in no time they have produced a coat. In no time they have, may God bless the work of our hands. And may we who are able to do those things remember that the gifting is from God. Because he designed you. He himself is a designer. He himself is artistic. He himself is a maker. And so whatever we make, pray the Lord that actually we are able. And God gives us all those giftings. So some picks for you, some lessons to pick up. One is that, you know, we are gifted. It's God who gives those gifts. It's God who gives those insights. It's God who enables us to create something to put there for his glory. So God sets us apart. He has set you apart with your gift. Now, I have my own that he uses for his glory. You do have your own for God's glory. And so I pray that actually God will continue using you. Whichever you are, whichever gift that you have, whichever talent, may God use it. And high time, like I've already said, to remember that God has given you that gifting for his glory. Bezalel came to the limelight because of his workmanship, his craftsmanship, his, you know, artistry, his skill. And may you also stand out in the name of Jesus Christ for God is glory. So we learn God is the one that bestows these gifts, the one that enables us to, because he himself is, you know, is a worker, is a craftsmanship, is is a craftsman, is he does these things. We see it in the creation. Genesis chapter one. He looks at the formlessness of the earth and he designs it, he organizes it. And this is something that we pick, friends, from God. He designs day one. One thing on creation, day two, day three, day four, very organized. And how I pray that God continues organizing us. We have, we have destroyed what God intended. We have gone against his creation because we have not realized our position that God has given us here on earth. So friends, it is a call, you know, come back to realize that actually we are gifted differently for God's own glory. And one other thing that actually that we learn is you are created for the reason. You are put there for the reason. You know that actually, do you know that God can do anything? God can do everything. I've already mentioned about creation, but he puts man in a position. He creates Adam and Eve to continue. They are co-creators with God. They are co-makers. And so they were supposed to continue with this. And so God himself can do it, but he commissions men and women to do it on his behalf. Now he gifts you, he talents you, he makes you what you are to, for, to exhibit his glory, to expand on his, you know, workmanship. And so this is, Something that actually I desired that actually share in this finding God, that we may find God in our giftings, that we may find God in our talents, that we may find God in whatever we do, and it is for God's own glory. So this is for his glory, and whatever you look like, whatever you do with your hands, may God reveal it to you that you are his workmanship. And 
it's important also to know that whatever you do, God is your enabler. There are some people who have taken it upon themselves and they think that the wisdom is theirs, the power is theirs, the energy is theirs. Yes, you may think so, but for us who approach it from this Bible angle, from the word of God angle, we know that we cannot do anything. Without God, there's nothing that we can do. With God, great things that he can do through us. And of course, I could have seen men and women in the Bible here that acknowledge that God uses them, that God enabled them. And one of them is this Bezalel man and enabled to do great things. And in your office, at your workplace, in your home, everywhere. Are you a father? Are you a mother? Are you a manager? Are you who? Remember the position that you have is for God's glory. Bezalel was commissioned for God's glory. Now, God has commissioned you to be a father. God has commissioned you to be a son in that home. God has commissioned you to be a daughter in that home. God has commissioned you because it will be God himself doing it everywhere. But he can use men. Remember also, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he could do everything, but he called 12 men and he commissioned them to go because he knows that actually man must have responsibility to play. You and I have the responsibility to play in the presence of the Lord. That's why I encourage us that Bezalel leaves us a great lesson that we can stay in the shadow of the Lord, in the protection of the Lord. Actually, the name of Bezalel is actually just about that, in the shadow of the Lord, the protection of the Lord. And this is what the name Bezalel is about. And so, friends, I just desired that actually this informs our being today. Because the world today is full of creativity. People must create something. People must design something in the world of technology. Now that is God's work. Are you working at the computer? That's God's work. Are you working in the factory? That's God's work. But he has given you the ability to do what you are doing to enhance his glory. And so this is critical for me as a person and also critical for you in the servant, as a servant of God, that God is the one who enables you. He stirs you up. He enables you. He, you know, he livens you for his glory. Now, in this story of Bezalel, the intelligent, the man with the spirit of God, the man with ability, the man with knowledge, the man with the craftsmanship, God values beauty. Very important. Beauty, God values it. And because it talks about designing the tent of meeting, our churches actually uh, come out of these church buildings. You see curtains hanging, purple, green, yellow, whatever the colors are, the lights, you know, flashing and everything. And I was energized to think that actually our places of worship must, you know, must look splendid. Our places of worship must look, you know, great because they exhibit the presence of the Lord. And so we need to dive back here into this and say, yes, the place of worship must look exactly what God wants it to be. Because God is a God of beauty. The reason why when we read Psalm 27 verse 4, you know, Psalm, 4, Psalm 27, verse 4, there is something that actually the psalmist does mention, and I just want to, 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 to read it from his word here. I am holding it in my hand, and so I must read it. Now, here the Bible says that one thing I have, have I asked of the Lord that I'll seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. This is, you know, gazing. You know, you look in amazement, the beauty that is, the colors that are. Our God is a God of beauty. Designing things in the church, in the place of worship, making them, not to exaggerate, of course, but God is a God of beauty and he will give the ability, he will give the intelligence, he will give the craftsmanship to organize things 
in the, to the glory of God. And so I've taken this very seriously and God giving us the ability, God giving us the resources. We need to do this very, very, uh, very, very much. So God is character is the measure of our goodness. God is character is the measure of our goodness. God is character is the measure, is the measure of our beauty. When you are able to do something for his glory, you know, even our bodies, not to design them like what, but may God give you the ability, may God give you the, the, the wisdom that clearly whatever you do is for the glory of God, even the beauty. That those that are exaggerated, of course, working their heads, their hair, whatever it is, and they exaggerate here and there, but getting wisdom, God commissioning you. Now, those that work in saloons, God that, that work in those places that beautify people, designers, you know, decorators, you need to get back to the word of God and see what God talks about beauty and you do it God's way. A saloon manager or whoever you are, do it God's way. Because it's all about beauty, do it God's way. That will glorify God. Are you a decorator? There are those that have, they do work, you know, functions, do it God's way. Bezalel gives us a point here. And so actually you do it God's way to bring glory to God in whatever you do at whatever point. And so this is important. So in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, there's something that actually Paul mentions, and I keep quoting it many times wherever I am. Because actually in this chapter 4, verse 8, you see, God is things, God is words, God is people. I encourage you to do things that glorify his name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul mentions to the people here, you and I, in Philippians 4, 8, this, finally, brethren, finally, brothers, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And so you need to also think a little bit deeper and wider about this. Lovely, excellence, honorable, and God desires beauty. God desires orderliness. So Bezalel was given the skill, the ability to organize these things, to arrange for the glory of God. So I pick great lessons from this man, Bezalel, and he's one of those that may, that not pronounced very heavily, but he leaves a mark on my life. And may he leave a mark on your life because we know biblical figures that are great men, that are of sounding nature, Joshua, Aaron, you know, even the lady Miriam, and uh, you know, Caleb, we have talked about all those people. But this one, there are, and several others, like previously we also talked about Hur, and the others that we shall continue talking about in these scriptures, but they inform our spirituality, they inform our being. And so when we serve God with our best effort of excellence, he will entrust us with more. Serve with your skill. Serve God with your talent. Serve God with your intelligence. Serve God. Like actually we're reading in this, um, the, the portion that we, we, we got Bezalel, chapter 31. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Are you a player? Are you a football player? Are you at whatever, you know, talent? Serve with the, with the Spirit of God in you. And God will add you more and more and more and more and more. And so you will read on Exodus chapter 35, verses 5 to 10. And this is also very, very important as I tend to know at the close. 35, uh, 5 to 10. Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Yes, a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of generous heart, let him bring to the Lord his contribution. Let him bring the Lord his contribution. Gold, silver, and bronze. You know? He mentions blue, mentions purple, mentions scarlet. These are colors. You know? 
that can be arranged and bring them to the house of the Lord. You know, tandis, ram skins, goat skins, acacia wood, you know, people that can do something, you know, at the altar, wherever, bring them to the church. And this is something that the Bezalel was encouraged to do. And so, in verse 10, the Bible said that, let every skillful craftsman among you come and make all that the Lord has commanded. Now, this is very, very critical. That actually, are you talented in a way? You bring your talent to the house of the Lord. Bring it, come, and let us build this together. And this excites me to make an invitation to you that God desires you to use everything that is about you, that is with you, for his glory. So in every, every assignment, every assignment that is given by God, purpose to finish and ensure that everything is done well. Do the finishing. Even on our shirts, you will find some finishing done and done properly. So everything that you do, apart from these days where you find people putting on some clothes that, you know, uh, call them damage and uh, I'm told very expensive things. Now, God is talking about finishing well. Everything that you do, a shirt, good finishing, a trouser, good finishing, and even your work that God has given you, do good finishing. And may God keep you and may God bless your work, the work of your hands, when we do according to his will. God wants you to be skilled for his glory. Be skilled for God's glory. May I be skilled for God's glory. And may God, you know, gather all our skills. And we do it. And the generation will marvel at how God is using you and me. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.